Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called The Last Days of Athelbrae. In the game The Last Days of Athelbrae, you're going to be playing as one of the few living civilizations left on the planet of Athelbrae. Unfortunately for you, the planet is dying, and now old friendships are going to need to be rekindled for a short period of time, as well as new alliances and distrust and unruliness is going to occur. And why? Well, that's because there's not enough resources for everybody to escape. You'll need to be building a specific type of ship in order to escape the planet. In order to do that, there's precious resources on the planet you'll need to gather to escape. The first person, or I should say group of uh, type of civilization to escape is going to be the winning civilization, and everybody else is going to be left in the wake of death and destruction. As the planet crumbles around you, can you manage to gain the necessary resources to escape, or will you be consumed into a small little cluster of pieces of the planet left alive, and then slowly explode into nothingness? It's up to you to determine that in the game, The Last Days of Athelbrae. Let's go ahead and take a look at all the components in the game. So here we have the game, The Last Days of Athelbrae, and everything that's going to be included. As you can see, you're going to get a full board along with a bunch of these tiles here that are randomly allocated to create the planet of Athelbrae. You're also going to be turning over specific planets based on the rules and putting out resources based on what it tells you to do so. Some of them will just say random resources, other ones will specify what type of resources, and then of course the rest will be hidden, provided that they of course have on the backs a, a hidden number of resources that can be gained when they get flipped over. You're also going to get to choose between five different races. You're going to have the Tolkar, you're going to have the other four races here like the Sieve, the Dawne, the Koreth, and the Call, And of course all the four different colors. They all have their own unique special abilities and powers and they all come with their own unique pieces. These are the pieces you'll be getting. There's either going to be specific tokens for that specific race. You're going to get a city as well as a city tile. Five different scouts, four you start with and one you can build. And a deck along with a player reference card that shows you the menu of actions and the ship parts needed to build the main ship to escape the planet and how many of those pieces are inside your deck that you'll need to acquire throughout the game. Over here are a bunch of tokens that you're going to be using throughout the game, whether they're biohazards or poisonous or repair tokens. These things will be used during the world events as well as periodically for different reasons. There are the four other decks of cards for each of the other races and all of the different cubes you'll be using as resources for the planet. Two other interesting things to note are there are locations, and the locations are based on the board here. It tells you A through I, and then of course the number is going to determine the location. So if you flip over one of these cards here and it says H3, the location is going to be H and 1, 2, and 3. The world events are also going to be in coordination with the locations, and certain things will happen, whether it be a home base or whether it be a simple location. What event occurs is going to depend on the card, and whether it remains in play or is a temporary world effect will also be placed on the board over here. There are three different uh, end is nigh cards here that will be put throughout the deck, and as these cards get flipped over, they're going to ensue more world events, similar to the game uh, Forbidden Island or Forbidden Desert, that makes the, basically the entire planet start to corrode. You're also going to be getting this token here, which is for the first and last player, some dice, and this random allocation resource die, which you'll be using when the planet requires you to roll the die for specific bonus resources. This is pretty much what we're going to be in the last days of Athabrae. All right, let's come up and talk about it. To begin the game, you're simply going to start out by choosing one of the specific races along with getting their abilities and everything that's going to come with them. They're all unique so they're all going to come with different tokens and even potentially tiles that you can use on the board depending on if you gain the technology from the decks of cards that they come with as well. Everybody's going to get a deck of cards to start with too. They're called tech cards and you can use them to basically create new technologies as well as parts for the main ship you need to win the game. You're also going to flip over 15 locations in a two and three player game, more in a larger player game, and these locations are then going to be used uh, to create resources on the board randomly, and it's always generated in a different way every single game. Once you flip those over and roll for the resources or added them based on what it tells you to do so, then you're going to take the first, second, and third cards and place them throughout the deck, so that way the game will speed up as the game continues as you're drawing new world events. Then you're going to take two scouts as well as a main location. You're going to roll for that location, or you're going to flip over a location for your main location, put that location uh, as your new base on the planet, and then put your scouts there. 
players are going to in turn order take three actions and they'll be using this menu of actions here that they can only take one of each on their turn. They can move, search, R&D, build, recruit scouts, attack, trade, special ability, regroup, and fuel the IQV. Fueling the IQV is also going to require a special resources, resource, which is going to be this little white resource that are very, very difficult to get. You'll need it in order to win the game. Basically bring all the stuff back to your base, fuel it with your uh, specific fuel source, and then you can escape and win the game. Now that's going to be difficult because you're going to be, be uh, acquiring different things throughout the game from the planet. And the way you're going to be doing that is the different actions I'll talk about right now. Moving is you're going to be able to move your scouts around. Searching is you're going to basically be rolling for research, uh, be, for, rolling for resources. Uh, build is going to be basically building specific things uh, such as technologies and parts. You're going to have R&D, which will draw three cards from your deck. Select one and keep that and put the other two on the bottom. Recruiting scouts is similar to building, but you'll be, you'll be building scouts onto your base. You can attack other players, provided you're able to. You can trade with other players. There's special abilities that you can use on your specific player board. You can look at them all here. So the qual here says they have an ability. It says that they can extra ex extrapolate trending data. Players may look at upcoming location cards plus an additional location card and replace them in any order they wish, manipulating the game and where things are placed throughout the game. That can be used as an action. Regrouping, which counts as three actions. That's basically what happens when you have no scouts left and you want to try and get back in the game and feeling the IQ of you to win. Players are going to choose those three actions in turn order and go around the board. Once they've done that, they're going to then select a location or locations and a world event for each one of those. Do what it says on the location, whether it blows the planet up or helps you in some way, which is very unlikely, but it can, or simply to change the map as you see it. The game is slowly going to start condensing on itself. The first time you see a location, it's going to flip over and then the next time it's going to be removed from the board just like Forbidden Island and eventually the board is going to be this vast cavernous nothingness and hopefully you have the resources enough to escape by the time the game starts to win because the game can win here too. If you take too long or fight against each other too much without trying to succeed your goal, the game will eventually destroy the planet in which case no one will escape and the game will end. That's the basic idea of the game. I'll show you the setup as well as a couple turns and how to use your actions here. So now we're back to the game, The Last Days of Athelbray, and as you can see, I went ahead and set up everything for you. In a two or three player game, you're gonna take 15 of these locations, flip them over, and then flip the tiles over that correspond to them, and then put the resources down that say on the back of these what to put down. This one says, of course, a purple and a red, and this, of course, is a yellow, green, and a blue. Whenever there is one that looks like that, that's a wild, and anytime you have a purple, it's also gonna be a wild, and a wild is simply by rolling this die. Uh, after that, you're going to make sure everybody has their location and their city, and you're gonna flip over new location for each player. So this guy here has B2. So you'll go to B and you'll go to 2 and you'll place this right here, which is going to be the base of that player, as well as taking the first two scouts. And these units will go right here, right next to the city, which will be used for resource gathering and whatnot. Then next player, 2, and you'll just do this in order. You get G3 over here. And you're going to go here, 1, 2, and 3, right next to this location, removing this purple one. Place that one down like that, and the first two scouts as well. After that, you're going to take the world event deck over here and you're going to put in 10, 5, uh, 5, 10, and 15 cards in order, the three cards for the world event, put them in there after you've went ahead and shuffled the deck. So that way the game will increase as time progresses, making things more challenging and more events to show up throughout the game. Have your token set aside, have your extra scout set aside, and have your fifth scout, which you can build, set aside as well. We can take a look at the player board really quick over here, and it shows you the scout as well as the number and how many pieces of resources it can carry, as well as, uh, I guess, damage that, or damage it can take by flipping it over, um, uh, things that can happen to it, such as poison and whatnot. Your city storage, so in order to store things, you have to go to your city. So you'll take your scout out, you'll get resources, you have to come back, and you can put it in your city storage. You'll use these resources... Uh, uh, to build certain things in your deck and in your deck of cards you're going to see technology that has certain costs as well as events that are free to play or of course you're going to have these ship parts the blueprints that'll have a certain cost these specifically say which color cubes you need to build them which will also take a build action as well in order to do so now to begin the game you're simply going to give one player the first starting token here which is going to indicate the player that gets to go first as well as the player who's going to initiate the locations and world events which will then take place uh, which will then switch to the next player after the entire round is over. So this player can go ahead and go first, and you'll get to choose three of all of these actions, but he cannot select them more than once, and he can't use them after he's... He can't go build R&D and then use his build action again. He also... Build does not transfer over after using a specific action. So the first thing he can choose to do is move, so maybe he'll move his scouts in certain locations. And then after that, he can choose to do a uh, search, which is pretty simple. Searching is you're going to take the die 
presented here. And uh, depending on the number of, uh, depending on the specific type of character is what how many die you're gonna roll. But in general, it's gonna be two die and you're trying to get a uh, five or a six in order to get the resources. And you start with scout one and go all the way down. Scout one's on a red, so he's gonna roll. He would score one red resource. If there's no resources there, he takes specifically the color. If there is resources, he can choose either one. You're gonna put it in your cargo bay and then you're going to roll for the next character here. This is yellow, uh, but he could also score this green here, but he didn't make the roll, so he gets nothing. If you fail to roll anything though, you'll always get a red resource and you'll put it directly into your city storage so you're never gonna never you're never not gonna get something during your search action another thing you do is R&D which is simply taking the deck here and drawing three cards selecting which card you want these are all technologies here and then this is the fifth scout right here and then putting it into your hand putting the rest of them on the bottom you're gonna be utilizing this to search for different parts of the ship if you put them down the bottom it'll be harder for you to get them and remember you're gonna need one antimatter chamber and there's only one in the deck so it's very important that you secure that piece along with some of the other ones that are more difficult to get. After he's taken all three of his actions, the next player can go. Uh, recruiting scouts is simply uh, spending food in order to put scouts onto your city. You have attacking, which only certain people can do throughout the game and uh, specifically how it works. Uh, trading allows you to trade with people next to you. Special abilities is what this thing says is the oracle. You can go ahead and look at world events and move them around in a specific order. You have regrouping, which will give you bonuses if you have no scouts left. And then the fuel, the IQV, which is how you win the game. So he's already taken his three actions. So the next player is going to to get to go and of course he'd probably function in the same way oh, i had green move first oh well but then we'd have blue move and he would do the same thing he'd go on to specific locations uh maybe over here and then he would also do his rolling for for gathering resources and whatnot you have a specific pool of resources and of course certain things that uh can befall you during the world event so after all players have taken their action then you're going to move on to the next step this player is going to get his turn once again he'll draw a location card uh and then he's going to go ahead and go to that location so b one two three four five and six take a world event see what it says if it is a basic location, you'll read this one. If it is not a basic location and it is a city, you'll read this one. This one says that every player must break all built technologies and blueprints. Breaking them simply means turning them to the sideways. And of course, you can repair them with repair tokens, but basically they're not going to be useful until they're repaired. So you have to be very careful with that. Breaking, <laughs> breaking technology is not good. Um, then after that, this will move on to the next player, and the turn will continue, and players are going to keep going around. Uh, like I said before, as you gather resources, and bring them you have to bring them back to your base you can simply just you can move by going here here and here and as long as you went through your base you're going to actually put the resources back onto the base so you can actually store it and continue your move action which is nice because then you can search uh, after that which is cool as well uh, you'll also be gathering of course as many cards as you possibly can that's going to help you throughout the game there's certain events that are only in each specific deck everybody has their own unique ability which is going to cost an action and of course they have an attribute as well once per round a Tolkarian scout may reroll one search die including a ra the random resource die. So if he rolls the random resource die because he scouted here, because uh, he searched there and he got red, maybe he didn't want that, he could roll again, and he gets blue instead. So that's kind of how they all work. The green guys here have these specific bridges. As these pieces fall off the board here, which is likely to happen, so for instance, if I flipped over the next location and it was uh, E123, then I would take these off, uh, this would burn, and this location would be gone forever. Scouts on it could die. Uh, there's there's also some other things that can happen based on the event cards that take place. But you see as the board is going to slowly be starting to deteriorate. As you go farther down the location uh, deck, you'll also go farther down on the world deck, and you're going to come across an interesting event which is called It's Getting Worse. In this, basically you're going to be able to take a card from your discard pile, and then you're going to be drawing two locations and two events for the rest of the game, making the game expedient, and there's two more cards that do something very similar to this, making the game even more difficult as time progresses. You'll leave these right here. You're also going to come across certain things that are um, world events that will stay in play throughout the duration of the game or until they are removed. And uh, let's see if I can find one here. But anyway, they, they just go over here. And then, of course, there's temporary world events that would go over here. These things will affect the different aspects of the uh, play area. Maybe you won't be able to go on mountains. Maybe all the forests will be poisoned. Something nasty can occur like that. Or adjacent tiles can be affected in some way to make the game more and more difficult. Every single player has their own unique abilities and their own unique pieces. Like I said, the green guys can place rope bridges, bridges which will let them go across. And also, enemies can go across, but at a cost, potentially. Um, and that's the basic idea of the game. You'll be fighting as well 
well and scouts might take damage you'll have to flip them over you can lose scouts and cost, you have to bring them back which will cost actions it's not good to lose scouts in the game but overall once you get all the pieces you need in order to escape the planet so you're going to need like this guy here you're going to need the uh, thrusters the quantum reactor you're going to need the hull you're going to need the cryogenics and you're going to need one more which is the uh, antimatter chamber there. And if you can build all of these with the costs down below, then you'd have to get back to your city, provided you had one of these white resources in your storage. You can spend an action to escape the planet and you would win the game, <laughs> the, the last days of Athelbray. Do this before your opponents and they all get to be crushed on the planet left to die alone. Wonderful, right? All right, let's talk about it. So what do I think about the game The Last Days of Athelbray? Well, we've heard that. Let's go into a couple of little um, caveats. Uh, whenever you place your base down at the beginning of the game, you're going to take all the resources that are either on the back of the tile or the back is already shown. You're going to take the resources that are on top of that tile. So you're always going to start with a random allocated amount of resources, which makes it a little interesting as well. You can also choose to not drop off your shipment when crossing through your city, and some races will benefit in some way. There's also a bunch of world events, and I'll go ahead and talk about a couple of them because I felt like I didn't talk enough about these guys as well as a couple of the cards from specific decks. Uh, so you got location event, every player must break all built technology, which I talked about before, destroy all active technology if it's a shockwave on your specific city. Uh, the location event is players uh, have no additional effect, which is very nice and doesn't happen often. Or sneak attack, if you're uh, playing the Tolkar, break all of your built technology. If you're not the Tolkar, but they are in play, you may roll a d6 for each of their built technology. On a one or two, you can break that technology. Wow, that's mean. Uh, cataclysm. Upheaval of the planet is having immediate cosmic effects. Athelbray's twin moons are on a collision course. The fallout will be ca catastrophic. All Athelbrayans must make a choice. If all players collectively spend purple, equal to the number of players, and any combination of blue, yellow, or uh, green, number of players, then no additional effect. If they don't, no, flip all locations of world events to the number equal the number of players so that basically makes the game even more challenging if you're not willing to get rid of resources so it kind of makes a collaborative effect uh destabilization of mines excessive mining is speeding alpha Bray's demise flip or remove one adjacent tile to each mine in play do not draw additional world events for tiles flip this way so there's a ton of different effects that can take place there's world effects and whatnot that can affect specific locations going on in them can be very hazardous but if that that uh, event and leaves play and you're on those locations it can be very beneficial to you as well which is interesting unique and kind of deadly um you're gonna have technology like i said before each of the different decks have their own different technologies but what's also interesting is they have their own unique uh, events as well such as the tolkar they have this card called smite smiting up to two enemy scouts doing a damage uh, do, doing two damages you see fit, or automatically killing one opponent's scout. To get this to be the game it can be very, very powerful because scouts what you need for resources, and if you can kind of cripple somebody in that way, you can make it very, very devastating for them to win. Uh, the Oracle here, each scout performs a search in mountains or forests. They can count uh, one success as a purple, which means they can simply roll um, a, a wild, which is pretty nice. But they have, as you can tell, a bunch of different things that affect them in the different decks, and every single race plays differently and is going to affect you your style of play in a different way as well. There is an interesting amount of skill involved in the game as far as how you utilize your class and how you kind of manipulate your players. For instance, the Tokar is very good at holding that smite and making sure people do what they want in order for them to not be crippled. But another thing is maybe the uh, Suv or whatever is going to be utilizing their rope bridges to help the planet stay alive at the cost of players not attacking them. Oh, I see that your planet, uh, your, your base is pretty much destroyed. I'll give you a rope bridge provided you leave me alone. So there is that interesting aspect in the game. Now there's also a lot of random chance. So there's certain locations where you know specifically where certain resources are you can go get your you can get your scouts to walk over there and pick up those resources provided they roll a five or a six so it's still rather difficult to get those resources but other times there is going to be uh, a wild right and the wild is very beneficial because purple is scarce and you're going to need that but the only way to get it is by rolling this die or certain cards effects or if they're already on the board as it is so utilizing this die is important but still random chance a lot of dice rolling involved in this game so uh, if you don't like the random aspect you probably won't like the game because there's a lot of randomness to the game as well you've got the world events you never know what's going to pop out where it's going to pop out and how it's going to affect you you could be doing stunning 
extremely well and all of a sudden your base gets hit with one of the world events and now you have lost all of your scouts, your entire area has been poisoned, there is a ton of nastiness and it very rarely leaves the board. It takes a while for the rain, remains in play aspects to disappear so you have to be willing to accept a certain amount of punishment throughout the game as well as the opportunity to punish somebody else. Now luckily you guys can work um, separately basically to kind of take care of yourselves and leave your opponents alone. However, you'll start seeing somebody start to scoot ahead and you'll have to push them back. The thing is the game can win on its own, which I really, really like that aspect of the game. Uh, however, if you're all screwing each other, constantly, which does happen in this game, you're going to notice that the game is slowly going to start creeping up on you, pieces are going to start falling off of the planet, and now nor neither you nor any of your opponents will win the game. Now that might be a strategy for you, but it can be irritating, right? If nobody wins the game. You always want at least somebody to win, right? You spend, so this game's probably two to four hours, so it's a lengthy game. So having nobody win because everybody's too busy fighting each other can be a bit of a pain in the butt, right? So you want to determine how much you really want to mess with your opponents and how much you want to kind of focus on working together just enough to where you're going to scoot ahead and ignore the possibility of loss due to the fact that everybody is teaming up on you because you've been such a hazardous to them and their their success in gathering enough resources to get off the planet. As long as you escape, that's what's the most important aspect of the game. So realistically, I think for a lot of people who... Uh, it, it looks like terraforming the Mars, right? but it doesn't play like that at all. It feels more of like a strategy, semi 4 x feel with a a dice rolling mechanic added to it and the uh, Forbidden Island aspect rolled in as well. So it's things are falling apart. You're trying to gather things, build things, increase your territory, increase your different texts and all that kind of stuff. Planets falling apart, need to escape. There's a lot going on in this game, but it's not very complex. There's only a certain amount of actions, and as long as you have this card here, you can see what they do. And most of the actions are not used throughout the game for a lot of the portion, for most of the portion of it. You're going to be doing move, search, R&D, building, and occasionally recruiting scouts. Attacking is rare, trading is fairly rare, special abilities can be used, and they're very beneficial, provided you have the uh, extra action to spend on your turn. Regrouping, hopefully you don't have to use that, and then feeling that QV you only use once throughout the entire game. So, overall, it's a solid game. I really enjoy it. This is definitely going to be one of those games for certain people that see the, uh, they like a longer game, they enjoy the uh, competitive nature of not only your opponents, but also the board itself. They like a little bit of resource management, tableau management, and tactics all rolled into a very social game. I have a live play up on my uh, Facebook, if you want to go ahead and check out the live play of us playing with the designers of the game. And if you feel like it's a good game for you, definitely do check it out. I do recommend this game. It's good, but it's definitely going to be certain people who are going to enjoy this game. And I think you should check it out to determine if you're one of them. Overall, positive experience. Had a lot of fun playing. Crazy, crazy game. The last days of Alpha Break. Go ahead and check out the description below on Kickstarter if you're interested in backing. All right, guys. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go check out the rest of our videos. Can YouTube like, subscribe, and comment? It all does help. We do really greatly appreciate it. As well as checking out the last days of Athel Bray, which is currently on Kickstarter in the description below. Destroy your enemies, destroy your friends, destroy your family. That's always a fun thing to do. As well as go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. That's all I got for you this time. And as always, guys, I look forward to destroying a planet and then escaping on it with you next time.